Hello Method students, uh, in this video we're going to go through general solutions of trig equations and what we mean by general solutions really is just solutions to sine, cos or tan equations that don't have a domain and so the general solution really represents every possible solution that you could have. Um, for sine and cosine our steps are going to be uh, to find the first two solutions and then to add k multiples of the period to your answer where k is an integer, so remember integer can be um, any positive whole number, negative whole number or zero. For tangent, we actually only find the first solution and then add k multiples of the period to your answer where k is an integer. So basically what we're doing is the same four steps that we usually do to solve a sine, cos or tan equation. It's only the last step that's a little bit different. The last step of solving an equation, we usually add or subtract the period to keep finding further solutions. In a general equation, when you add or subtract the period, you actually add or subtract the period an infinite number of times, um, which sounds complicated, but we can write it in a way that's um, hopefully nice and clear and it kind of sometimes makes it the question a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about whether something's inside a domain or not you actually just write the answer so example 23 says find the general solutions of sine of 2x equals negative root 3 on 2 so to start off we treat this the way we always would we would say okay well if I'm thinking sine of some angle gives me root 3 on 2 I need to know what my first quadrant angle is or what my base angle is if it's sine, well then root 3 is opposite, 2 is hypotenuse, and if I need to make root 3 the opposite in the triangle, then this must be my angle here, which is pi on 3. So theta, or my base angle, or whatever I want to call it, is pi on 3. Uh, and then I'm thinking, okay, well, in this equation, it's sine of an angle gives me a negative value, so I need to think about what quadrants sine is negative in, and sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. All right, so I'm gonna get an angle from using the third quadrant and an angle from using the fourth quadrant, sorry, a solution from using the third and then a solution from using the fourth. So now's where I think, okay, that means my angle, which is two X. If I think about this as a third quadrant answer, well, that will be pi plus pi on three. And so 2x would equal, uh, well, what's that? 3 pi on 3 plus 1 pi on 3. That's going to be 4 pi on 3. And if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, which is really the same as multiplying by a half, I'm going to get x equals 4 pi on 6, which is the same as saying x equals 2 pi on 3. Okay, so that was an answer that we got from using the third quadrant. We now use the answer in the fourth quadrant, which is to say that the angle just 2x, must equal, uh, well, 2 pi minus pi on 3. And so 2x will equal uh, 6 pi on 3 minus 1 pi on 3, so that's 5 pi on 3. And dividing both sides by 2 gives me, oops, 5 pi on 6. Alright, now normally what we would do is we'd look at our domain and say, okay, well, we're going to add the period or subtract the period to these answers and find any more solutions that are still inside the domain. But in this case, our domain is really all real numbers because we're finding general solutions. So we could sit here forever and add the domain, uh, sorry, add the period and add the period again and again and again and again. Obviously, we're going to run out of paper and time. What we do is we say, okay, well, like always, what is the period of the function? And for this question, it's a sign function, and so it's 2 pi over n, n is 2 in this question, so the period is pi, and what we're going to do is we're going to add pi, um, or whole number multiples of pi, to both of these solutions, um, and try to write it in a way that kind of just makes that happen over and over and over again. The way that we write it is to say that x will equal, let's start with our first solution, 2 pi on 3. So it's 2 pi on 3 plus, now you can use any letter and you'll sometimes see other letters used. I like to use k, but that's just kind of arbitrary. k times the period, which is pi. Right? Or x will equal 5 pi on 6 plus k times the period, which is pi. But what we want to make really clear 
is that we only want to add the period like a whole number of times. We don't want to add, you know, 0.2 lots of the period. We just want to add one period or two periods or three or four or five, or we want to add negative one or negative two lots of the period, because remember that we're allowed to subtract or add the period. So what we say at the end of this is where K is an element of Z, because remember that Z is our notation for integers. So we've said clearly that K has to be a whole number or positive whole number or negative whole number or zero. Uh, and then what this means is we've now got, again, I'm going to make it really clear, this is my final answer. We've now represented every possible solution to this equation over all real numbers. And that's what a general solution means. If we have a look at a multiple choice question from a past exam, um, the general solution to the equation sine of 2x equals negative 1 is, you can see these solutions would look really, really ugly and that would be enough to kind of scare a lot of people off. It's a calculator question, so let's use our calculator. Um, again, I'm sort of having to do this old school because my calculator computer is not working. Calculator on the computer, I should say, is not working. <clears throat> but what we're going to do is use our good friend solve. And some of you might have actually come up with this or come up against this accidentally. If you try to solve a trig equation without putting in a domain, it gives you something that looks a little bit ugly. And you might, if you haven't really investigated this much before, that might just look like gibberish, right? What the CAS is doing here is it's saying that X is equal to pi times a constant. Now it uses this sort of language, constant one. That's just like our K, that's just like our integer number. So this is saying X equals pi times an integer minus pi on four. And another solution at uh, X equals pi times an integer plus three pi on four. So if we write both of those down, so from the CAS we have, well, I'm going to write the negative pi on 4 first. So negative pi on 4 plus pi times k. Uh, and the other solution was x equals 3 pi on 4 plus pi times k. So I've got my solutions from the calculator. <coughs> Well, if those are my general solutions, I've now just got to see what this matches up to. Now, a little bit of an unusual thing the calculator's done here um, is it's actually given us really the same solution twice, um, which is a bit unusual. It must just be the way that it's built in to solve these things because the period of this equation is two pi on two, which is equal to pi. So you can actually see that these two things are one period apart. So we really only need one of these two answers. Both of these answers are correct. Um, they both represent the same thing. So really we only need one of these answers. So what we could do is just look through the options and see which one at least has one of them um, in it. First option, option A, uh, X equals N pi minus pi on four. Well, I copied it from the calculator slightly differently, but you can see that my first solution here matches up exactly to that one, right? Where N is an element of Z. Uh, and I, if this is a short answer question, I should have written where K is an element of Z. So the question is to use N instead of K. That's all right. It's representing the same thing. So A is the correct option. You would maybe just double check and make sure that none of the other options look correct, but you can actually see if you read through them all carefully, uh, some of them are represented in a really weird way with a power of N or something like that. So I'd probably rule those out straight away. E and B look like they're in the ballpark, except you'll see that they're both um, 2N pi. So they've treated the, the question like the period is 2 pi rather than pi. Okay, so that is what rules out options B and E. Um, so A is definitely our only correct option and, and that is the correct answer for this question. So I hope that gives you a good idea of how to find the general solution of a trig equation. Remember from our first example, we just follow the same steps as usual. It's just the end that's a little bit different because when we add the period or subtract the period at the end, we're actually adding it an infinite number of times and that notation is how we write it.